Lord, I just ask that today, somehow, this is a day of change and freedom and healing. Because this is the day he encounters the demonstrated love of God. And Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, it's that verse, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us. Your version may be a little different. But God commends or the, you know, God demonstrated his own love for us. And that, that you know, the love demonstrated. Love demonstrated. Um, God demonstrates his love. And this is an interesting thought. And I, I just really got kind of wrapped into this. And so I really tried to dig into it. And, and uh, God demonstrates his love. That word demonstrates there. Interesting word. It means union together with, combined with, to stand together. And really, if you really, I know that doesn't mean a whole lot to you, but kind of it's this way. It's that God steps into our life to unite us with his love. Not dependent on anything we've done. God, he comes in and sets that up so that we can be united with his love. He demonstrates or he steps into our life. He, he demonstrates, he does something for us that, that, that we had no part in and, and we're not even aware of. And so I want to just talk about this demonstrated love. We're going to talk about it maybe for a couple of weeks here because this is just an amazing thing. That's what this whole process that we're walking through as we go towards this celebration, what we're talking about, what we're celebrating is the demonstrated love of God. The demonstrated love of God. And, and, and I know that God is a lot of things, but the Bible's pretty clear. John tells us there is one criteria, the one description, the one thing that is the overriding thing that we need to understand that is who God is. And God is, first and foremost, He's love. I didn't make that up. That's in the Bible, John 4. God is love. And, and, and we sometimes, when we get religious, and, and please, I'm not, when we get religious, we make God something other than that. We, we start putting all this other stuff out here. But what is the thing that changes us? What, and when Denise was, I didn't tell her to pick these songs out. She, that was just God. And, 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 and what she's going to close with, I wanted her to do it. And I didn't have to. She already had it on the list. But it's because he, God, he wants us to understand something. And, and I, if I can convey it this morning, I hope I will. But it is this demonstrated, amazing Love that he has, that he's, that he's done for us what we could not do for ourselves. And, and I want us to experience that. Because you see what Denise is talking about, what makes, what makes us on fire for God is when we get a hold of, when it somehow gets deep into our spirit, that God loved us even when we were his enemy. He loved us. He, he pursued us. He stepped into our life even when we were didn't want anything to do with him. He was stepping into our life. It's an amazing thought. I don't know. And, and as I'm preparing to just come and acknowledge that and see it, and, and you know, and, and this week as we put the crosses up, and man, what a, what a powerful reminder of how much God demonstrated his love for us. And, and uh, so this morning... I just want to talk a little bit about that demonstrated love. That demonstrated love. So I'm just going to share a few thoughts with you. The first one is this. That, that demonstrated love, it's unexpected and undeserved. It's unexpected and undeserved. How many of you ever asked God to do something because you kind of felt, and you, know, you don't have to raise your hand. Please don't raise your hand. But how many of you have ever, because I've done this, how many of you have ever asked God to do something because you thought he, you deserved it? You don't have to raise your hand. I have. You know, God, I've been a good guy. You know, I've been preaching the gospel. I'm a pastor. You know, and you know what? I don't deserve any of it. I, don't, I haven't done anything. All I can do is respond to what I didn't deserve. Every good thing that ever happened in, through my life, any good thing that I've ever done, any way that somebody has been uh, touched or blessed, it wasn't because of me. It was because of God in me and because of who he is in me. I have nothing. I can't hold anything. I can't go to God and go, hey, look, here's my credentials. You know, Paul said, here's my credentials. I got beat. 
You know, it, it, his credentials weren't, you know, there's nothing that we bring to the table. He brought it all. He brought it all. And when we were actually opposed to him, he, he brought it all. And so we don't deserve anything. Uh, we have this amazing God-shaped hole in our heart. And, and we try to fill it with everything but God. And that's the reason why we get into such destructive behaviors, because we look for some way to fill this need for the love of God that was in there. He created, he put it in there, but we don't know how to respond to it. Matter of fact, we reject the very thing we want, and when we try to fill it up with stuff that, that, that in the end hurts us, you know? And, and, and yet, it was created there because God, before before we were even formed, he wanted us to experience his love. So he created us with a capacity to experience it when we didn't even know it. You know, I, it's, it's, it's an amazing thought. You know, and as I look at this and as we look towards the story, and, and one of the most amazing things that happened as Jesus went through this process and as, they, as, as he's being crucified and he's hanging on a cross, there's a guy there that didn't deserve anything. There's a guy there that came there knowing he deserved to be there. There was a guy there that a few minutes earlier had been mocking Jesus, but in the moment somehow, in the middle of this, the, this incredible power we call the love of God, somehow invaded his life, and in a moment he saw that God-shaped hole in his heart, and he said, hey, Jesus, can you fill this? What he actually said, remember me. Remember me. And what did Jesus say? Today, dude, this is a dude who's been a bad dude. This dude, that guy, said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Unexpected. I, mean, I guarantee you, that guy, when he got up that morning, he wasn't planning on having an encounter with Jesus. How many of you, on the day you got saved, that's what happened? The only reason why I went to church that Sunday is because my mom asked me to, and I'd do pretty much anything for my mom. I would, you know. You know how... Some of you would ask me, I'd have been, nah. <laughs> mom said, we want to go to church, sure. I didn't plan on going to church to get saved. Matter of fact, I thought, I'm going to church so mom will fix dinner. Yeah, you know. I mean, let's, come on, let's be honest here. I didn't plan on it, but I didn't plan on any of the events. But how I mean, you know, God, he just in a demonstrable way steps into our life and he loves on us in a way that we didn't expect and we surely don't deserve. And he comes in and he invades our world. He steps into our life and he invades us and unites us with this amazing love. And we did nothing to deserve it. I don't know. I, I hope you grab a hold of this because you see some of you are just struggling with that God should love you. Here's the deal. There's nothing you can ever do to make him love you. He already does. And the quicker you grab a hold of that, the, the quicker you're going to experience it. And I, my prayer this morning was is that each and every one of us, because you see, I want that ember of the Spirit to invade our life. You know, and here's how it happens. It's when God just surprises us with his love. And steps into our life. You know. I didn't really expect Denise to love me. It was unexpected. It was a grace gift. It's one of the purest ways God's shown me that he loves me. I didn't expect it. She was, you know, I was glad she was kind of blind. You know? She had a bad day, you know? And I, I took advantage, you know? It's like, <laughs> this may not come around again. It was unexpected and in many ways undeserved. It's just a little bit about how much God loves us. 
Amen. Yes. All right. Second thing, and it's it's relentless and reckless. It's relentless and reckless. And, and please, I'm not being disrespectful to God. It just is. And uh, I want to just talk about that for a second. It's relentless and. In Colossians, in chapter 2, verses 13 through 15, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ and He forgave us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he has made public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Now, that sounds kind of, maybe that overwhelms you, maybe you don't grab a hold of that. Here's the deal, and and, and what I want you to grasp, that God's love is relentless so much that he will fight through every obstacle, every barrier, everything that stands against you. He will pursue you through everything that comes. And we're going to sing a song at the end of this, and it has a line in it. And here's what it says. There is no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There is no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down coming after me. Here's the deal. What the picture of that is, is that it's this beautiful thing of the relentless love of God. He will break through every power that will try to keep you from the love of God. He will tear down the lie. He'll break through the wall. He'll break through the resistance. He'll do whatever it takes because he already has. It's relentless. It doesn't matter what you do. He'll still keep coming. Isn't that amazing? He, he just presses through no matter, you may say, I don't want it. He goes, I'm going to love you anyway. You, you may hear that lie which says, I don't, I don't deserve to be loved. And he goes, I love you anyway. <laughs> I, isn't that amazing? I don't know about you, but if you really grabbed a hold of that, you might go, Woo! Sorry. No, I'm not. I, 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 if you just touch a hold of a little bit of the amazing thing, this thing we call the love of God that has pursued us and broken through every obstacle, who's torn down every uh, opposition, who's defeated every enemy, even when we were the enemy, he defeated us. Isn't that amazing? It's relentless. You know, I, I tried to outrun it. I really did. I was like, whew. And when I got where I was going, it was already there. Uh, yeah, ambush. Yeah, we love that. Or as our friend Jim Force says, squeeze them. <laughs> squeeze them. Pursues us. And it's reckless. Not, God's not reckless. His love is reckless. God's intentional. But I mean, how many of we, we, we've memorized John 3, 16? For God, what? So loved the world, that which was, and how many of you know, we kind of teach our, 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 ourselves through his, our, our, our experiences in life, you know, to love carefully. Isn't that true? You know, don't just give your heart away. You know, be careful. You'll get hurt. You know what God said? I'm going to be reckless. Because you see, I'm going to love on people that may never, ever respond to it. I'm going to, I'm going to, he didn't say I'm going to go love on part of the world. He said, I'm going to 
send my son for God so loved the world, I'm going to give the most expensive thing I can give so that they can experience my love. I'm going to do it despite their response because I'm reckless in my love. It's just reckless. I'm going to do it anyway. How amazing is that? I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty overwhelmed about that. You know, I've had some people do some amazing things for me, but not like that. You know, it's reckless. Because you see, he, he loves the worst among us. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Because you see, I am that, the worst among us. Because you see, if anything that breaks his heart is devastating, then I've broken his heart, and yet he still loves me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I've broken his heart over and over again, and yet he relentlessly and recklessly loves on me anyway. And some of us, when we get religious, like, oh, no, that can't be true, but that is true. It is absolutely true. And we kind of sometimes want to qualify with people. Surely God doesn't love them anymore. No, He loves them absolutely. Does He tolerate? Does He want sin? No, He paid the price for that. He wants to deal with it. That's what He wants to do. And here's all He's looking for. It's for somebody to just recklessly love them. Isn't that amazing? I never get, I'm excited. Because you see, God demonstrated his love. One of the things I tell young couples, you can think you're in love with somebody. You can say to yourself you're in love with somebody. But until you do something about it, you're not in love with them. You just got willies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Emotion without action is nothing. <laughs> yeah. I had to do something for Denise to know that I, she, that I loved her. Yeah, that was that scary day one day when I, you know, like, I was at my brother's house. That was scary enough, in it? I, I love you. Oh. <laughs> but I, mean, I mean, you know, that's what it's powerful when we demonstrate in a way that is unexpected and a little bit reckless. That's what God did. He's not reckless. He has intentionality. But His love is reckless. And it's relentless. Got two more things. You know, two, two things left. Um... It's unfathomable and overwhelming. What that really just says is it's really big and it'll, it takes your breath away. John writes about it in his letter, 1 John. He says, What great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. That word lavished, different versions use different words, but it's an amazing word. It's, it's, uh, it, it's given with excess. That's what it means. It's the same word that's used when it says, ask and it shall be given unto you. I mean, you know, we give with reservation. You know? What's pretty cool is, is that Jesus gives lavishly. He, he gives with abundance. Overwhelming, unfathomable, incredible abundance. He, in his love, he gave it. It says it was lavished on us. And how do we know it? Because we're declared to be the the children of God. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're 
part of the family, and, and, and that's what we are. That's what we've been, and he has, he's given us his love in, in, an, un, in, in an unhindered and unreserved and unpulled back way. He's lavished his love on us. It's, it's amazing. It's above, you know, and it's, it's incredible, and, and yet we somehow, we, we kind of, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, I only deserve a little bit of God. You don't deserve any of the love of God. Here's what he did. I lavish it on you is what he said. I'm going to give it to you, not because you deserve it, because it's my joy for you to experience it. How do I know that? Hebrews 12, 2, who for the joy set before him endured the cross and sat down at the right hand of the Father. The joy set before him. What was the joy that Jesus was looking to? You experiencing the love of God. How do we know that? Man, just read your Gospels. What did Jesus do? You know the story of the, the sheep? You know, he left the 99 to find the one that had gone away, and he put him on his shoulder, and he brought him back. And what did they do? They had a party. I, I we sometimes just, I, I, I would have loved to have been in Zacchaeus' house. You know, this guy that everybody hated, Jesus loved. He has an encounter with God, and he stands up, and he makes his bold proclamation, and, and I can just see Jesus in the background going, yeah! Man, if you don't like that, get over it. How do I know that? It says that when a child, when somebody comes to know the love of God and experiences the grace of God, the very angels in heaven dance in celebration over that tr truth and that reality. Here's the deal. God wants us to know the unfathomable love of God more than we will ever want to know it. He is desperate. He is passionate. He wants you to know the depth and the width and the length and the, br the breadth of the love of God. It's just, I hope you grab a hold of this. I don't know. It's, it's what will set you on fire. It, it's unfathomable. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, I, I shared with you about my friend Johnny, and he went home and Sunday night. He was just talking about this with his, with his son. And he got the privilege of leading his son to Jesus Christ. I bet you, bet you know, I bet old Johnny was going, yes! What an amazing thing. What did God lets us get? Can you believe that? He lets us experience that. I, I, I've been consumed by this, and I'm... You see... I grew up in the church. I, I understand religion pretty well. And there's nothing, I mean, there's, I grew up with amazing heritage and uh, uh, great things, and my parents instilled so many things. But there was that amazing moment, and what that amazing moment was is when I understood that God loved me. The words that changed my life as they were uttered through my friend Kenny Holcomb, were this, Jack, Jesus loves you, and so do I. I didn't deserve either one of those. And it, it just opened the floodgate of my, my heart. I could, you know, I mean, I was a mess. I, you know, it was one of those times where maybe you're like you right now, you're like, preacher, quit preaching. I, I need to go talk to Jesus. I don't know. I, I, there's two questions I want to leave you with, and we're going to sing a song. And, and if you haven't experienced the first one, you can't do the, the second one. The first question is, have you truly experienced the love of God? Have you truly experienced the love of God? Not have you been to church, 
not have you said a few words, but have you really experienced the love of God? Because if you haven't, He's desperate for you too. It's, it's, we, we talk about all kinds of things. It can be unexpected. You may not have come here today looking to experience the love of God, but God, I love that He does that. You know, Apostle Paul, on his way to hurt Christians, and God said, that's enough of that. Boom! Counters Jesus. Unexpected. Amazing. Life changing. If you haven't, man, I just, he is desperately crying out for you to know it. He demonstrated. He demonstrated his love for you. We're going to talk more about that, but not today. The second question is, you shared that love with somebody else. See, that's, that's where it gets good. That's the good part. That's when it gets fun. It's when you you let that love flow out of you. You, We're trying to figure out how to have this perfect formula for telling people about Jesus. Here's the deal. Just ask God to help you love somebody like he loves them. And that, that'll work. You see, my dad had asked Kenny Holcomb to pray for me. And for months he had been praying for me, so much so that the love Jesus had for me began to enter into his heart. And when I walked in that door, he already knew. He was like, man, this is a day. Why? Because he loved me already. And when he walked up to me, it wasn't contrived or made up. It was out of his heart. He just went up, Jack, man, dude, Jesus loves you. And man, I do too. It changed my life. You know, it wasn't any gospel presentation. It wasn't any, which is a good thing. You need all that stuff. That's, that's important. We need that. But here's the deal. When you share the love of Jesus, it's pretty amazing what will happen. There's no defense for it. It's, it's incredible. I don't, have you done that? If you haven't. It's fun. Oh, yeah, you're going to get hurt. That's true. People are going to reject you. That's true. But that's, it's okay. If you ever get one person who experiences it, you go, yeah! It's the most amazing thing in the world. I don't want them to hear to a religion. I want them to experience the love of Jesus Christ. The love that breaks every enemy that's in their life. The love that paid the price that sets them free from all the things that hurt and destroy them. The love that elevates them from that, that terrible place of, of feeling you're worthless to knowing you are a child of God. That love that rescues you over and over and over again. Even when you fall down, it still picks you up and still brings you back. Why? Because God wants you to be a part of his family worse than you want to be I'm done. I've asked you two questions. We're going to sing this song, and if you haven't experienced that love, I'd love to pray with you. I would love to absolutely pray with you. I don't want you to 
feel is I just want you because my heart's desire, my real heart desire is that somehow God's, this amazing love that he has for you will invade your life. It will saturate your being. It will change the core of who you are. It will take away the questions and, and replace it with an assurance that you are somebody because Jesus made you somebody. It'll devastate every sin and failure because it paid all the price. It demonstrated it. And if you're here this morning, you're like, man, pastor, I just want to love on people. Here's the deal. That's why we pray for you to be uh, you know, equipped by the Spirit. We're not praying for you for all the other crazy stuff we get associated with. Here's what Jesus said. You will be my witnesses. And what does that mean? You'll love on people. How cool is that? You want to get a fire going? You want to see miracles happen. So I will tell this amazing story Wednesday of a mother's love that cried out to the love of God to touch her son. This is an amazing story. Amazing story. Do you know what the driving force in it was? Love. She loved her son. She knew a God that loved her son. And she connected with the God that loved her son. And God did something for her son. And in the process, shared with Rosalba, hey, I love you too. Isn't that cool? I don't know if you... All right. We're going to sing. If this is somehow stirring in your heart, you want to just come and reach out to the love of God, you do that. If you want somebody to pray with you, you come up here. I promise you. I'm not going to do any weird. I just want to pray, Lord.